This is a story about how I was myself in love. I will always remember the moment I said my first I love you to someone without expecting anything in return. It was in a situation where I don't think that many men or women would have said it because it was so hopeless. But something inside me told me to express this feeling and even though the circumstances were pointing to a different direction, my intuition told me to, to express this love that I had in, in my heart. But you see, the man I loved had suffered a very severe accident and for many days, I didn't know if he's going to wake up from a coma or not. Well, luckily he did. Before that, I had broken off all communication with him over something really silly. So you see, in that moment, when I found out the news of his accident, my ego broke in two like a dry stick. His recovery took many months, but now he's doing more than well. But only I know that during this time, I think I was God's most frequent user. So what happened was I just had this feeling that I have to go there, so I didn't know what was going to happen when I go to the hospital. All I knew is that I had to be there. So I followed my instinct, and I embraced the unknown. I even had to travel to another country for it. And I took a big risk because I opened my heart. I was vulnerable. But I had to do it for myself because I don't think I could have moved on in life if I hadn't done what I still felt that needed to be done. So what happens, I catapulted myself from my comfort zone. I risked being rejected having my feelings hurt, having my heart broken. And I was on a totally unknown ground. But that's exactly where the magic happened. I said, I love you. And you know, it was so strange because he said the same thing, and I didn't expect it. Not having expectations is so hard. Yet the minute I renounced it was exactly when I got what I truly needed. So we both let our guard down, and we both showed each other who we really are and how we truly feel about each other. It was beautiful. And in that moment, I promised myself that I would always trust myself from that moment on, and that I would always follow my silent captain. So, Captain, oh, Captain, took me to another interesting story, my silent captain. It took me to music. I had a very interesting dream this spring. I dreamt that I was playing the piano. I play, was playing Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. And you have to know that I, don't, I haven't played an instrument before in my life, but that dream was so real. And when I woke up, for, for a second there, I still knew how to play it, and the next moment, it was gone. But I was enchanted by the dream, and days and weeks passed by, and I, and I was still thinking about it, and so I thought, okay, I'm going to do something. So I found a retired piano teacher in Budapest. She's still teaching uh, piano lessons for kids. And uh, I called her, and she asked me, why do you want to learn piano, how to play the piano at this age? Because she's teaching kids, and I told her about my dream. She laughed at me at first. And, uh, but after she sensed that I'm really, really serious about this thing, she agreed to meet me. My first piano lesson wasn't actually a piano lesson because she wouldn't even let me touch her piano. She was just checking me out. So I had to go over my dream again, and... Uh, she said something interesting. She said, well, you know what? If it's in you, I'm going to make you remember it. Wow. She had me right there. So I was really excited about this, and I was saying, okay, so let's start with the bit of Moonlight Sonata right away. <laughs> and she said, hold on. Like, like, let's take a step back, okay? 
First, you have to learn the basics, and after, you know, for maybe five years of practicing, we can move on to this type of piano lessons. And I, was, I, I, I just knew it. I just knew that I can do it. I felt it. So I said, please, let's do it my way. But how? So I said, let's just follow my logic, okay? I have no idea how you learn piano, but let's follow my logic. And she agreed. And so I was asking questions. She was replying. And something interesting happened. I started to play the sonata. I, I, I know the beginning of the sonata. I'm, I'm still progressing, but I love it. And you see, by following my instinct once again, by being myself, I managed to teach someone who thought knew everything about piano teaching to learn something new. And also, I'm living my dream. It's not a big dream, but it's still my dream. And, and it's fantastic. I love it. And you know what happened? The cherry on top of this cake was that the minute I decided that I'm going to learn to play the piano, a friend of mine called me, a very dear friend of mine, and he said, well, you know, my mother used to play the piano, and right now we have this beautiful antique piano, and we don't have anywhere to put it. Can we put it in your apartment? I nearly fell down from the chair. I said, yes, of course you can put it in my apartment. So every morning, I wake up, and I play the notes. And I'm just so grateful for it, because, again, I followed my instinct. While I was preparing for this event, I talked to a lot of people. I talked to my friends, I talked to my parents, I talked to kids, um, people at events, parties, even the hairdresser. And I really wanted to uh, tell them my point of view about being yourself, about following your instinct. And I was also very curious to know what they think about it. My questions were, did you follow instinct when everything seemed impossible at first? And did you follow your instinct when everything else was pointing in the other direction. So here's what I discovered. In almost all cases, except for kids, people told me that they think that being yourself in today's world is a luxury. Why, I asked. And the most common responses were, because if I'm myself at my work, I might get fired. If I'm myself in my family, you know, I have responsibility. I just can't do as I please. Because I don't have time. That was my favorite. And because if I'm myself in my relationship, my partner might leave me. OK, so here's my point of view. I firmly believe that being yourself in today's world is not a luxury. It's a choice. If you're working in a place right now, which you hate, then you can do something about it. And I think the really, really hard part in this is that you have to find, you have to determine what you really want to do. I think this is the only hard part in the whole process. Because once you find out that one thing that you want to do, once you have a goal, then you find something that corresponds with that. And you just have to apply. I'm not saying it's a walk in the park, but it's possible, right? And if you have a family, you have the chance to set a positive example for your children. Because if you are well, then they too will be well, because they want to become you. So you're a role model. You have the, responsible, you have the responsibility to be well. If you don't have time, well, take time. That's my answer for that one. And if you are in a relationship where your partner has absolutely no clue about your deepest feelings, about your deepest thoughts, then ask yourself this. Am I a liar? See, I think, actually, I believe we all have instinct. We're all built the same way. Uh, only some of us are more used to paying attention to their inner world while others are very, very distracted by the noise of everything else that surrounds them. They complain, they compete, and they compare, but they don't do much about it. So I'm here to tell you that 
if you want to be yourself, you're going to be happy. And you are responsible for your own happiness. You are not a puppet that life pushes around, okay? So I think everybody should take responsibility for their own thoughts because thoughts build attitude, and attitude leads to action. And your actions actually determine who you really are. Let me tell you another story. This is a story about me being myself in my career. It was New Year's Eve in 2008. I was living in Austria. And I remember that night, I decided I'm going to become an entrepreneur. I was 23, and I had absolutely no experience in running a company. I had hardly any work experience. What I had was a really strong gut feeling that was telling me to go for it, do this. You're made for this, you can do this. So I quit my job, and I moved back to Romania, where I invested my money in, in this new venture, which I call adventure. And I had a great partner, who also had absolutely no clue about what we we're doing. <laughs> so here we are, two happy campers with a dream, with a vision, and no knowledge. But we started our recruitment agency. <laughs> I don't think anybody believes in us, except for my parents. My mother, she hired some workers to transform the garage into an office as a sign of her support. And uh, even though she was kind of worried at times, she believed, and her actions just showed me how she truly felt. So just as a side note, if you have someone in your life who believes in you, hold on to them, okay? So fast forward in time, one year and a half later, approximately, uh, we still had no results, and the money was gone. I remember clearly sitting on uh, Judith's couch in Budapest. She's one of my best friends. And she was asking me, so how's the business running? And I remember that in the back of my mind, I knew we had three euros on our bank account. And I was thinking, why am I not scared? Why am I not worried? I mean, I should freak out or something, but I'm calm. Is this good? Is this bad? So I tried to make it sound funny, and I said, Business is growing. We already have three euros. She looked at me and she said, you need to find yourself a job, quickly. And that's when it hit me. I had a brilliant idea. I said, you know what? I'm going to find someone who's going to help us grow. But how are you going to find someone who's going to help you grow, she said, when all you have is three euros on your bank account? That sounds very irresponsible to me. And I said, yes, I know it sounds irresponsible, but something tells me this is exactly what I, sh what I should do. I mean, I shouldn't give up. I don't want to go back to work for somebody else. I don't want to find a job. I want to create a job for other people. And so I followed my instinct again. And this someone who helped us grow was another very good friend of mine, whom I've known since I was nine years old. Again, I got super excited about this idea. I was making plans, I was, uh, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to, have, we're going to rent an office, we're going to talk to these people, we're going to travel to this job fair. And then Jolti, my business partner, he asked me a few days later, listen, um, I know that you have already planned the whole thing, and you're acting as if it's already a reality, but I think you should call Zoltan and ask him if he's interested in working with us, because he has no clue, OK? <laughs> so I made that call. And I was pretty direct. I told him that I want him to quit his job and come work for us full time. Later that week, he called me back while he was heading to his, uh, to his uh, workplace. He was working at a travel agency, and he was, I think he was well paid. And he told me, uh, I've made the decision. I'm going to quit today, and I'm going to come with, to work with you guys. I said, thank you. I knew that was it. We're going we're gonna to go really up. This is going to be great. So 
Later, I found out that many of our friends have called him and told him that he was completely insane for making this step and that he had lost his job over something that's never going to work. But today, after so many years, we're still working together and we beat the odds. You see, in our culture, they say that working with friends is dangerous. I say working with friends has been one of the best choices I've ever made. Again, I followed my instinct. It seems to me that being myself has been the key to all of my successes in life. And every single time I try to be someone that I'm not, I failed. And believe me, I failed many times, probably like most of you have. When you try to find out who you really are, when you push until you reach your boundaries. Today, I would like to ask you all a really big favor. I'm going to ask you to encourage someone around you to start being themselves and tell them what Oscar Wilde said. He said, be yourself because everybody else is taken. Thank you very much.